Uh, my name is Steve Peterman, and I played uh, Rob Lovebeads Donovan on uh, Square Pegs. Rob was an interesting character. I, I heard from Ann that the network wanted a sympathetic adult on the show. Um, and uh, I specialized at that point, if I wore my contact lenses and let my, uh, and didn't shave, I, I tended to play young drug dealers um, or, or musicians. And if I put on my glasses and shaved, I played young doctors and lawyers and teachers. So I had shaved for this and I was wearing my glasses. So I became the teacher, but they wanted Rob to have this, this sort of hippie history. And, um, and now that I know that Al Franken was involved in it, I, I'm not surprised. I felt like the role could have been written for me because I went to school in the late 60s and early 70s. I wore my hair long. Um, I experimented uh, with, you know, the various substances that were around at that point. And so the backstory I felt was really like, I didn't have to create a backstory. It was essentially, I thought I was playing myself. And I did have a quality back then that, um, I probably lost now, but I seemed like the kind of guy that um, I seemed like a nice guy, and um, and parents tended to like me, so I could probably get away with some of the uh, of the sort of drug innuendo stuff on the show, um, and still not be threatening to parents of the kids watching the show. I had always been interested in writing, but terrified of it, and I remember really loving hanging out with the writers on Square Pegs. It was a, a wonderful group of people and a lot of women. Um, I, I just remember thinking, this is such a cool, smart bunch of people. Anne was bigger than life and uh, Deanne Stillman and Margie Gross and Janice Hirsch. They were all incredibly uh, kind to me and very sort of supportive and encouraging. And um, I started writing with an acting friend about a year and a half after the show ended. Um, and it was just something I thought I'll do in between writing, in between acting auditions, because uh, I wasn't working as much as, like most actors, I wasn't working as much as I wanted to. And uh, one of the very first jobs I wound up getting as a writer was with uh, Anne on Different World. And um, that was my first. That was my first big network job. And from there, uh, I went on to do a couple freelances of other shows, and then ultimately uh, wound up on the, uh, in the original writing staff of Murphy Brown. I stayed on that show for six years, and my partner, Gary Donzig, and I went from the baby writers on staff to uh, executive producers running the show in the fifth and sixth year. Um, then I went then I, uh, Gary and I developed Suddenly Susan with Brooke Shields. Um, then did several other shows about kids, including a, a wonderful show called State of Grace. And the last two and a half years, I've been executive producer of Hannah Montana. I've thought often about Square Pegs and how I'm back 25 years later uh, sitting behind the camera in another school hallway watching two girls who are best buddies walk down that hallway. Um, and the emotions I'm dealing with in these kids are the same emotions that the girls on Square Pegs went through. They're the same emotions that I went through in high school. They're the same emotions that we all go through in high school. Am I going to be liked? Uh, am I smart enough? Am I talented enough? Um, do my friends like me for who I am? Do, uh, can I count on my family? Can I be a good friend? All of that stuff is, it's universal. And I think it's one of the reasons that Square Pegs was as popular as it was and, and continues to seem to hold this place uh, for its audience today. I loved going to work on that show. Um, I've, I've already talked about the writing staff, but uh, the kids on the show were, I guess at that point, they were about 10 to maybe 12 years younger than I was, but they were so dear and genuine and, and everybody was pretty much at the beginning of their careers. And there was that excitement and, and enthusiasm about doing it that you get when something is still very new to you. And my wife used to come down occasionally to meet me for lunch um, 
and she and I would, would visit with the cast, and then I'd walk her to the car and she'd head home. And we were very touchy-feely and, and walked hand in hand and with our arms around each other and that kind of stuff. And I'd come back and the girls would be like, um, we'd be sitting there and it would be like, it would be like <laughs> sitting in the cafeteria at lunch. They'd be saying, oh my God, you guys are so cute. I love the way you walk like that. I hope I find somebody like that. It was just really, um, it was just all young and unjaded and very warm. And over the years, we've all run into each other periodically. And I find what's remarkable is nobody in that cast has changed. Uh, Sarah Jessica, when I see her, is as warm as ever. Jamie, Amy and I run into each other. Um, and I've continued to see the writing staff, too. It was just one of those wonderful experiences. When I found out the show was canceled, it was just for me. I was incredibly disappointed, very sad, because it had been so much fun. And it was, it looked like it was going to be, ah, this is the one that kicks me up to that next level. And it was another of those experiences where you realize there's stuff going on that I have no knowledge of. Why is this show being canceled? I wasn't aware until much later, some of the politics and, and uh, some of the concerns that were going on behind the scenes. Um, it was very disappointing to me, but it was one of those experiences where it sort of shows you behind the romance of the business is the business. And you better find as many ways as you can of surviving in it as you can. And I think it was one of the things that encouraged me to go into writing. Working with Bill Murray was, was, a, was a real trip. But when Bill did the show, there was a script. And I was trying to follow the script and Bill was sort of, he'd kind of hover over the script for a minute and then he'd fly off over here and then he'd come back for a second and then he'd fly off over there. And I was trying, all I remember is trying desperately to sort of stay within the vague boundaries of the scene we were doing and, and just respond to whatever he was giving me. But I remember feeling like I was sort of fighting with one hand tied behind my back because I was trying to be a good guy and be in the script and but it was it was a trip. It was fun, and it it was one of those moments where you're really on on your toes, trying to figure out, okay, what's he going to do now? Um, that was that was fun. I remember the episode with Steve Sachs, uh, where I was the coach of the baseball team, and I was a big baseball fan, and uh, I was a Dodger fan at the time. Dodgers and Cubs. Whenever the Cubs were mathematically eliminated, I became a Dodgers fan, and Cubs were usually mathematically eliminated by June. So I spent most of the summer as a Cubs fan, as a Dodgers fan. And um, Steve Sachs had been Rookie of the Year. And we got him on the show, and he does a guest appearance. And it was the first time I'd ever worked closely or spent any time with a pro athlete like that. And you watch him out in the field, and he's this big, confident guy. And when he came to the set, you realized he was a kid. He was probably younger than he was. He was younger than me. And um, he was incredibly nervous. And he had memorized, clearly, he had memorized his lines. And he'd memorized the lines of everybody else in the scene. And you would have this bizarre thing where you'd be doing your lines and the camera would be on you over Steve's shoulder. And as you're saying your lines to Steve, Steve is mouthing your lines along because he wants to make sure that he's right where he's supposed to be in the script. So I'm talking to Steve and as I'm talking, Steve's lips are moving like mine. And it was so bizarre. And you talk to him and you realize he's not only is he young, but he's a pro athlete and he's sort of been in this cocoon from high school on where his coach took care of him, his college coach took care of him, his professional AAA coach took care of him. He was like, he, you know, you wanted to cut his food for him at lunch because he was like a babe in the woods. And it was a real kind of revelation for me because he was somebody, you know, in a sport I'd idolized. And, and uh, the sort of difference between your image of somebody and what you find after the fact, it was kind of like what some people experience when they meet actors. It was a wonderful experience. I am incredibly appreciative to Anne, uh, all of the writing staff, 
because I look at the episodes occasionally, uh, some of the writers on Hannah Montana, one in particular loves to go online and find things of me and bring them in so that everybody in the office can laugh at them. And I look at the work I did and I think I was incredibly mediocre in this show. And I, I'm so grateful to all of them for, for giving me the work that they gave me. They're part of what moved me out of acting also into writing. And uh, that career has turned out to be uh, more wonderful than I ever could have imagined. Um, and uh, uh, I'm very appreciative to, to have been a part of this.